The tapestry of our world's existence spans millions of years, marked by a multitude of events that have left an indelible mark on its current state. These events fall into three broad categories, positive, negative, and terrible. While some historical events have undergone modifications to align with the prevailing sentiments of their time, the essence of history itself remains unaltered. In today's video, we'll delve into the most terrible historical facts. Interestingly, in school it's forbidden to talk about these historical facts. While some may not be deemed crucial, they possess the potential to elicit concern among a diverse audience. Number 20. The Opium Wars in China The mid-19th century marked a pivotal moment in modern Chinese history with the Opium Wars. The first conflict, spanning from 1839 to 1842, involved China and Great Britain. Subsequently, in the Second Opium War from 1856 to 1860, a weakened China confronted both Great Britain and France, resulting in China's defeat. The terms for surrendering were harsh, requiring China to cede Hong Kong to British control, open treaty ports to foreign trade, and grant special privileges to foreigners in these ports. Adding to the complexity, China had to cope with a rise in British opium sales within its borders. This was rationalized in the context of free trade, with little consideration for the negative impacts on the Chinese government and its people. Various perspectives exist regarding Britain's motives in the Opium Wars. Some argued that it was about upholding free trade principles, while others claimed it was driven by the need for Britain to safeguard its international reputation amidst challenges in other regions. From China's viewpoint, the First Opium War marked the decline of late Imperial China, initiating what is now termed the Century of Humiliation. Present-day Chinese historians see the wars as aggressive acts, teaching them the harsh lesson that being behind invites domination. This influenced the later Chinese revolution against imperialism and feudalism. Number 19. The Great Emu War of Australia If you thought wars were solely human affairs, brace yourself for a peculiar conflict that unfolded in Australia during the 1930s, an event famously known as the Great Emu War. Post-World War I, Australia found itself grappling with an agricultural crisis, aggravated by an unexpected adversary, emus. These large, flightless birds migrated inland during each breeding season, finding the freshly cultivated lands of Western Australian farmers irresistibly inviting. The result was significant crop damage. In desperation, frustrated farmers, many of whom were ex-soldiers, turned to the Australian government for help. In response, the government dispatched a small military force armed with machine guns to cull the emu population. However, the resilient and agile emus proved to be formidable opponents. The military's inability to control the situation, combined with public outcry over the treatment of the birds, led to the withdrawal of the operation. In a strategic shift, the government adopted a bounty system to address the EMU population, and this approach proved more effective. This quirky episode in Australian history serves as a reminder of the unexpected challenges that can arise in agricultural management and the complexities of human-animal conflict. Number 18. Hitler and Disney Adolf Hitler, known as one of the most terrible figures in human history, orchestrated a harsh campaign against Jews, leading to the devastating World War II. Six years of intense battles caused widespread destruction, economic devastation, and the loss of millions of lives. Despite the passage of time since Hitler's death, recent discoveries shed new light on his unexpected fondness for Disney movies. While banning American films due to anti-American sentiments, he considered Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs the greatest animated film. During Roy Disney's 1938 visit to Germany, one of Walt Disney Company's founders, Snow White was sold to the Nazi propaganda ministry. The copy, however, reportedly went directly to Hitler's private cinema, unseen by the German public. Surprisingly, Hitler, both as a student and later as the dictator of Nazi Germany, maintained a hobby of drawing Disney characters daily and watching cartoons after dinner. Despite these interests, it's essential to recognize that these activities did not make him a kinder person. Recently discovered drawings from 1940, featuring characters from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, 
and an unfinished sketch of Pinocchio confirmed Hitler's genuine love for Disney. Number 17. The Siege of Leningrad The Siege of Leningrad was a prolonged military blockade undertaken by the Axis powers against the Soviet city of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, on the eastern front of World War II. The siege began on September 8, 1941, when the Nazi army tried orchestrating an attack. Despite their determination, the troops couldn't succeed. Throughout the 872-day blockade, German and Finnish troops severed supplies, leaving only a water route across Lake Ladoga as the city's connection to the outside world. Leningrad's residents faced one of the worst famines in history, resulting in a one-third reduction of the city's population to less than 800,000 people in just over two years. The harsh winter brought shortages of food, wood, coal, and gas, compelling people to survive severe frost without adequate resources. As desperation grew, reports of increased meat supply surfaced, initially attributed to horse and dog meat. However, it is now evident that the residents resorted to cannibalism, with over 2,000 registered cases during the period, though the actual number was likely much higher. This blockade ranks as one of history's longest and most destructive, marked by a staggering number of casualties endured throughout its duration. Number 16. Mozart's Lewd Songs Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, a celebrated composer, left an indelible mark on the world of music, despite his short life of 35 years. His prodigious talents, including a remarkable musical ear and improvisation skills, led him to become the youngest member of the Bologna Philharmonic Academy at the age of 14. Centuries after his passing, Mozart's compositions continue to captivate audiences worldwide. Contrary to the perception of a classical musician, Mozart's personality was far from conventional. Alongside his masterful works, he wrote several songs with unconventional and even vulgar themes. In 1782, he composed a musical canon featuring six subjects, but the somewhat indecent title led the publisher to modify the lyrics to ensure wider acceptance. Another composition humorously centered around the act of going to the toilet without leaving bed. While some pieces were crafted for friends, others provocatively challenged societal norms. Despite his refined musical taste, Mozart's playful and occasionally scandalous compositions remain a fascinating aspect of his legacy. Number 15. Pharaoh Pepe II and his dislike for insects. The Egyptian Empire stands as one of the largest in human history, where pharaohs wielded unparalleled power, leading some of their actions to verge on insanity. Pepi II began his reign as a pharaoh of the Sixth Dynasty in Egypt's Old Kingdom at the tender age of six, taking the place of his older brother Merenra. Notably, Pepi II holds the record as the longest reigning monarch, with sources indicating a remarkable 94-year rule. Beyond his extensive reign, Pepi II is remembered for some peculiar actions. Preserved letters reveal his request to Harkuf, governor of Aswan, to capture a politely presented dancing pygmy for court entertainment during expeditions into Nubia. Likewise, Pepi II really didn't like flies, so he allegedly asked his slaves to cover themselves in honey. This way they acted as fly traps, drawing the flies away from him and towards their own honey-covered bodies. Interestingly, not all Egyptians shared Pepi II's disdain for flies. Some revered the insect for its swiftness and unwavering persistence, symbolizing tenacity. Soldiers displaying these qualities on the battlefield were honored with golden fly awards. The symbolic significance of flies extended to the crafting of fly amulets from various materials like gold, silver, bone, lapis lazuli, faience, carnelian, and amethyst. Wearing a fly amulet was believed to offer protection from insect bites or to ward off flies, providing a more refined alternative to Pepi II's honey-coated approach. Number 14. The Pope's War Against Cats Religion is a complex and intriguing aspect of our world today, but there was a time when religious beliefs took an unexpected turn, almost causing a pandemic. In 1227, Pope Gregory IX took the helm of the Catholic Church. He held a belief that cats were carriers of a demonic essence, leading him to distrust these gentle creatures. In fact, he went so far as to advocate for their extermination, 
using his immense influence over the public. Gregory IX managed to convince people that getting rid of cats was necessary. As the plague unfolded during his reign, he became even more convinced of the rightness of his actions. The Pope attributed the plague to the devil's wrath, angered by his crusade against cats. Confident in his cause, Gregory IX increased his efforts to eliminate cats and reduce the public's reliance on domestic animals. Black cats, considered embodiments of the devil, faced particular wrath. Ironically, scientists of the time discovered that the plague was caused by fleas in the fur of rats and mice. Cats, natural predators of rodents, would have kept their population in check. However, the Pope's actions inadvertently led to fleas multiplying freely, escalating the danger of the plague. Number 13. Martin Cooney's Incubator In the contemporary medical landscape, incubators are indispensable tools in hospitals, especially for the care of prematurely born infants. These life-saving devices originated from Dr. Martin Cooney's unconventional efforts, an American physician who apprenticed under Dr. Pierre Constant Boudin, a pioneer in modern neonatal medicine. In 1897, Martin Cooney introduced the concept of the incubator to the world, despite facing resistance from the medical community. Doctors hesitated due to the high mortality rate of premature babies and the substantial cost of producing an incubator, approximately $75,000 at that time. Martin, driven by personal experience as he had used an incubator to save his own daughter, envisioned global acceptance of his innovative technology. To fund his work, Martin organized exhibitions at Coney Island, displaying premature babies in incubators, capturing the attention and generosity of the public. Despite saving an estimated 6,500 to 7,000 children during his career, Martin faced criticism for lacking formal education, with accusations of inhumanity towards infants used as exhibits. His inspiration for the incubator came from observing a chicken egg incubator at an agricultural exhibition. Adapting the concept for human use, he constructed a plexiglass box with an attached oxygen tube. By regulating temperature, humidity, and oxygen levels, Martin achieved remarkable results, offering premature infants a chance at life and a promising future. Number 12. Belgium's Atrocities in the Congo Free State Between 1885 and 1908, the Congo Free State, now the Democratic Republic of Congo, witnessed a brutal period of colonial exploitation under King Leopold II of Belgium. Despite never setting foot on the land, Leopold ruled the Congo as his personal fiefdom, orchestrating a reign of terror that resulted in the deaths of millions of Congolese people. Leopold aimed to extract maximum wealth, especially rubber and ivory, imposing a ruthless forced labor system. Congolese men, women, and children were forced to gather rubber under inhumane conditions, facing punishments like whipping and mutilation for failing to meet quotas. Despite a propaganda campaign portraying their rule as benevolent, the reality was a dystopian nightmare of exploitation, violence, and widespread human rights abuses. The mortality rate soared due to overwork, starvation, and diseases, leading to a significant population decline. The horror only ended in 1908, when international pressure, fueled by campaigners like Edmund Dean Morel and Roger Casement, forced Belgium to annex the territory, ending Leopold's personal rule. However, the damage was irreversible. The Congo scarred, its people victimized, and its resources depleted. Number 11. The History of Dentures Dealing with dental problems today is a breeze thanks to the availability of dental prostheses in medical clinics. Yet not many are aware of the intriguing and somewhat horrifying history of dentures. Let's take a journey back to around 700 BC, when the Etruscans in ancient northern Italy crafted the first false teeth from human or animal teeth. While these early dentures weren't long-lasting and quickly deteriorated, they were easy to produce and remained the standard until the 1700s. During this period, Denture materials took a leap forward with the introduction of walrus, elephant, and hippopotamus ivory. However, as time passed, changes came again in the early 1770s. French dentists, dissatisfied with ivory, embraced incorruptible dentures made of porcelain. Each tooth was meticulously hand-painted to resemble natural teeth, but these dentures were brittle, 
lacked aesthetics, and shrank when fired. While porcelain aimed to offer a more durable and aesthetically pleasing material, human teeth, often referred to as Waterloo teeth, remained in high demand. Harvested from up to 50,000 dead soldiers after the 1815 Battle of Waterloo, these teeth were affixed into an ivory base. In addition to Waterloo teeth, human teeth were extracted from executed criminals or sold by the desperate poor seeking to make some money. In 1820, Claudius Ash, an English silversmith and goldsmith, refined the process by mounting porcelain teeth on 18-carat gold plates with gold springs and swivels. These new dentures were superior both aesthetically and functionally, although notoriously difficult to clean. Meanwhile, denture bases received an upgrade in 1850 with the introduction of vulcanite, a form of hard rubber into which porcelain teeth were set. Moving into the 20th century, acrylic resin and other plastics became the materials of choice for dentures. Number 10. Shadows of the Dead World War II the most devastating and pivotal event in human history, left an indelible mark not only through the conflict itself, but also in its haunting aftermath. The course of the war took a grim turn when the United States Army deployed atomic bombings on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Amidst the catastrophic aftermath, local residents faced a chilling and eerie phenomenon, the emergence of black shadows etched onto surfaces by the intense light of the nuclear explosion. These haunting silhouettes captured the outlines of people, objects, and scenes obliterated in the blast, children with their bicycles, couples with their cars, a grim reminder known as the shadows of the dead. These spectral remnants stand as poignant testaments to the destructive power unleashed upon Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Scientifically, these shadows are believed to result from the intense light radiation during the nuclear explosion, akin to the formation of a regular shadow where an object obstructs radiation from reaching the surface behind it. In the atomic explosion's wake, the radiation was so intense that it altered the color and properties of many surfaces. Unprotected individuals within the radius of the light radiation suffered severe burns, leaving behind unburned shadows. While some of these individuals initially survived, they succumbed to their injuries and burns over time. Nearly 80 years have elapsed since the tragic event, yet the haunting shadows endure, serving as a perpetual reminder of the harrowing consequences wrought by the war. Number 9. Thomas Edison's Talking Doll Thomas Edison, the renowned American inventor and entrepreneur, earned widespread acclaim for his numerous contributions to technology. With a staggering 1,093 patents in the United States and over 3,000 internationally, Edison left an indelible mark on innovation. Among his many achievements, he pioneered the phonograph, a groundbreaking device for recording and playing back sound. Edison's impact extended to improvements in the telephone and telegraph, the development of a commercially successful incandescent lamp, and the introduction of the word hello at the beginning of conversations. However, even a luminary like Edison faced commercial setbacks, and one of the most noteworthy was the venture into eerie phonographic dolls. In 1887, Edison conceived an original doll, a 22-inch girl featuring a miniature removable phonograph playing children's songs. Fast forward to 1890, and Edison's company had refined the doll, launching it into mass production. The toy was revolutionary, boasting compact dimensions and a phonograph that allowed children to listen to poems. Activating the mechanism was simple. A child turned a handle on the doll's back and the enchanting tunes would play. Despite the initial promise of this innovative creation, reality painted a different picture. The development process spanned several years, but the sales window was disappointingly brief, lasting only six weeks. Edison's phonograph doll faced commercial failure due to the cumbersome nature of turning a handle to activate the singing. Compounding the issue, the ring-shaped wax records quickly wore out, cracked, and deformed. The doll's voice, intended to delight, had the opposite effect, striking fear into children and appearing more suited to the eerie atmosphere of modern horror movies. Number 8. The Story of the American Flag The United States flag, widely recognized around the world, 
carries a remarkable history of its creation. The iconic Star Spangled Banner was crafted by American designer Robert Heft. Born in 1942 in Saginaw, Michigan, and raised in Lancaster, Ohio, by his grandparents following his parents' divorce. During his time in elementary school, Robert's American history teacher, Stanley Pratt, assigned a project to the class, challenging them to express their love and respect for history. 17-year-old Robert chose to redesign the American flag, envisioning a flag with 50 stars in anticipation of Alaska and Hawaii joining the Union. Despite his creative foresight, Robert received a disappointing D grade for his project. Not feeling discouraged, Robert proposed a deal with his teacher, suggesting that if his flag design were adopted by the United States Congress, he should receive a higher grade. At that time, the United States comprised 48 states, and the teacher considered Robert's inclusion of 50 stars a mistake, contributing to the low grade. Robert's perseverance led him to present his flag design to President Dwight Eisenhower. Surprisingly, the schoolboy's project gained approval, standing out among more than 1,500 designs. On July 4, 1960, which happens to be the United States Independence Day, the flag was officially adopted as the national emblem, now proudly bearing 50 stars. Returning to Lancaster High School, Robert saw his teacher fulfill the promise and raise the grade for the once-dismissed project, marking a pivotal moment in the evolution of the American flag. Number 7. The Tuskegee Syphilis Study Few experiments in the history of medicine rival the notoriety of the Tuskegee Syphilis Study. Launched in 1932 by the United States Public Health Service, this study aimed to observe the natural progression of untreated syphilis in African-American men in Tuskegee, Alabama. Over 600 impoverished sharecroppers were enrolled, with about two-thirds of them having syphilis. Shockingly, they were kept in the dark about their diagnosis and misled into thinking they were receiving treatment for bad blood, a local term for various ailments. In reality, no meaningful treatment was ever administered, even after the discovery of penicillin in the 1940s, a proven and effective remedy for syphilis. The subjects were deliberately denied the antibiotic, ensuring the unbridled progression of the disease. Consequently, many men suffered fatal outcomes, developed severe health issues, and transmitted the disease to their spouses and children. The Tuskegee syphilis study persisted until 1972, when media exposure finally brought it to an end, concluding four decades of medical deception. This dark chapter left an indelible mark on medical research prompting significant changes in ethical guidelines and the establishment of review boards to safeguard human subjects. Number 6. Stained Glass Church Windows Stepping into an ancient church, you'll be immediately captivated by the vibrant stained glass windows that grace its walls. These intricate pieces not only showcase alluring designs, but also depict artworks like Leonardo da Vinci's mural titled The Last Supper and historical events from the Bible. Have you ever wondered about the fascinating process behind creating these mesmerizing glass artworks? Most of these images are crafted using stained glass, a unique type of glass that originated in the 6th century. In 1112, a German monk documented the meticulous process of producing vibrant and beautiful glass in his diary. The production begins by incorporating materials like potassium carbonate and sand, which are then processed at high temperatures. To give the glass its unique hues, metal oxides are added during the process. Once the glass takes its final form, it undergoes a hand painting process. The paint mixture includes copper and lead, along with a small amount of urine, serving as a diluent for metal oxides. This unusual addition enhances their fusion with the glass during firing, ensuring the impeccable outcome of the artisan's meticulous craftsmanship. Now it's time for our subscribers' pick on the most terrible historical facts. It's about the story of Genghis Khan and his remarkable empire. At school, it's forbidden to talk about this because of how inappropriate it might be to students. Perhaps because Genghis Khan was indeed regarded as one of the worst people to have graced the earth. Widely known for forming the Mongol Empire, he earned the accolade as a military leader in the 12th century, uniting Mongolian tribes into the largest state in human history. However, Genghis Khan was a harsh ruler, dominating lands from the Pacific Ocean to the Baltic Sea. 
At its peak, the Mongolian Empire was ruthless, invading foreign lands, plundering, and causing widespread loss of life, leading to the demise of over 40 million people. Remarkably, their extensive conquests even influenced the climate. Scientists estimate that the Mongolian Empire, under Genghis Khan, unintentionally removed 700 million tons of carbon from the atmosphere. With thee, he stands as the sole historical figure known to have inadvertently impacted the climate. However, this achievement came at a steep cost, claiming millions of lives in the process. But are such sacrifices justified in the pursuit of preventing global warming? So guys, do let us know about your thoughts behind this historical fact as we continue with the video. Number 5. James Jameson's Fascination with Cannibalism while many of us appreciate Jameson whiskey for its rich taste, the story of one of its founding family members is truly shocking. James Jameson, the great-grandson of the illustrious John Jameson, who founded the whiskey company in 1780, was not just an heir to the fortune, but also an adventurer. With abundant wealth at his disposal, James embarked on an expedition to Central Africa in 1888, accompanied by renowned explorers. In Congo, James committed a heinous act that continues to horrify. The details of this event vary slightly depending on the source. Jameson, his wife, and a translator provided different accounts. However, all agree that James commanded the expedition's rear column in a region known for cannibalism. Shockingly, he expressed a personal desire to witness cannibalism among the locals and reportedly paid six handkerchiefs for a ten-year-old slave girl. Tragically, she was tied to a tree and offered as food to the cannibals residing in that region. James not only observed but also went further, using watercolors to sketch the gruesome event. Meanwhile, Jameson passed away in August, and a few years later the accusations against him surfaced, revealing an act that the whiskey company had sought to carefully conceal. Jameson's wife and journalists published a letter in which he denied the accusations, claiming it was slander. According to him, he was an accidental witness to the cannibal's brutality, losing a bet to an Arab who argued that people in Congo lacked humanity. However, other alleged participants in the crime confessed to the horrifying events, shedding light on Jameson's guilt and his disturbing fascination with cannibalism. Number 4. Books in Natural Leather Binding When you step into a library or bookstore today, the chances of finding a book with a natural leather binding are slim. If you do stumble upon one, it's more likely to be made of synthetic material. However, books bound in genuine leather did exist, and in the past, this leather was not just real but shockingly natural. In a dark chapter of history, human skin was used for binding shoes and books, a gruesome truth that few might want to acknowledge. This practice, known as anthropodermic bibliopagy, involved using human skin for bookbinding. While this technique is not employed today, it was popular from the 17th to the 19th centuries and intricately connected with the gruesome practice of tanning human skin. After dissecting a donor's body, the process of producing leather for book covers closely resembled modern methods of working with animal skin. The key difference was the use of human flesh instead of animal hides. Natural leather bindings were crafted from the skin of executed criminals and convicts, under the assumption that they no longer had any use for it. Shockingly, some books with such unique bindings are still in circulation, adding an undeniable eerie element. It's chilling to imagine the reactions of individuals if they were aware that their bodies and skin would be repurposed for binding books. Number 3. The Chinese Massacre in the United States on the fateful evening of October 24, 1887, one of the most horrific race riots in United States history unfolded in the heart of Los Angeles. Over 500 residents, fueled by a wave of anti-Chinese sentiment, stormed the city's Chinatown, creating a night of violence and chaos. By the end of that haunting night, 19 Chinese immigrants had lost their lives, brutally taken by the enraged mob. The catalyst for this dreadful event was a dispute among Chinese factions that accidentally led to the death of a white man, Robert Thompson. The news spread like wildfire, 
escalating existing racial tensions and sparking a violent eruption. As word of the riot circulated, the mob grew, drawing people from various walks of life, including businessmen, laborers, and even law enforcement officials sworn to protect the city's residents. The mob's brutality knew no bounds. Chinese homes and businesses were ransacked, and residents were dragged onto the streets. Fifteen victims were hanged to death from makeshift gallows, their lifeless bodies left swinging as a chilling testament to the night's barbarity. When the chaos finally subsided, almost every Chinese resident had been driven out, leaving Chinatown in ruins. Yet, the aftermath of the massacre was as shocking as the event itself. Despite widespread violence and looting, only ten men faced trial, charged with manslaughter. In a disappointing but unsurprising turn, all ten were acquitted due to a legal loophole allowing the dismissal of Chinese witnesses based on racial grounds. Hence, no one was held accountable for the night's atrocities, and the massacre gradually faded from public memory. Number 2. Witch Trials in Europe From the 15th to the 18th century, Europe was gripped by a frenzy of witch hunting, an uproar fueled by fear, superstition, and religious fervor. The witch trials marked a series of prosecutions and persecutions where individuals faced accusations of witchcraft, often grounded in flimsy or concocted evidence. This era, dubbed the Burning Times or the Great Hunt, witnessed an estimated 40,000 to 60,000 executions, with the majority being women. Accusations of witchcraft became a tool to control and suppress those who challenged societal norms or were seen as threats to the established order. Convictions frequently resulted from torture, extracting forced confessions of consorting with the devil, practicing harmful magic, or attending witches' sabbaths. The accused faced grim fates, burned at the stake, hanged, or drowned. The witch trials epitomize a somber chapter in European history, reflecting a climate of profound fear and misogyny. They stand as a stark reminder of the perils of mass hysteria, judicial injustice, and the tragic outcomes of unbridled societal panic. Number 1. The Story of Minnie Dean Nannies and caregivers play a crucial role in the lives of families, often entrusted with the care of children they've never met before. However, the chilling story of Minnie Dean might make you rethink your trust in such caregivers. Wilhelmina Dean, known as Minnie, holds the unfortunate distinction of being the only woman executed in New Zealand's history. In the mid-19th century, Minnie and her husband faced financial challenges, prompting them to move to Winton. While her husband tended to pigs, Minnie took on the role of a nanny, offering her services to care for unwanted children in exchange for a fee. During this era, childbirth out of wedlock was deemed shameful, leading to the creation of baby farms where women could discreetly seek assistance. Minnie Dean, at various times, cared for three to nine children. Given the high child mortality rates of the time, the deaths of several children under Minnie's care initially raised no suspicions. Although police investigations found no criminal evidence, public opinion began to shift, accusing Minnie of wrongdoing in connection to the deceased children. In 1889, a six-month-old baby under Minnie's care passed away, followed by another child's death. Authorities, compelled to investigate, probed into the conditions under which the children were kept. While crimes committed by women were not uncommon and often sensationalized, proving Minnie's involvement proved challenging for the police. In 1895, a temporary detention and search of Minnie's house revealed a horrifying truth. The buried bodies of three children in the garden. Evidence pointed to one child being poisoned with medication while another had been strangled. Shockingly, many parents had entrusted their children to Minnie, ensuring their lives for a considerable sum. Despite her lawyer's attempts to portray her innocence, arguing that she hid the bodies out of fear and distrust, the court found Minnie guilty. On August 12, 1895, she was executed by hanging. Today, Minnie Dean remains a haunting figure in New Zealand folklore, her name forever etched in history as one of its most tragic and shameful chapters. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.